get kicked off. Um, Martin Clark is joining us this uh, morning, afternoon for him. He's in London, England. Yeah. Uh, Martin, Martin, wave at us over there. That's good Martin. To see you. Well, I can't see you all, but good to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you. And I'm, I'm, actually in, I'm actually by the River Thames in Oxford today. I've got a, a country place here, and uh, I'm in a 400-year-old cottage. Excellent. In Wow. Oxford. And I was, I was, yeah. That's old. That's older than anything we know, isn't it? Four hundred years. Yeah. It seems that way. <laughs> well, look, we are uh, we are honored to have um, uh, Martin with us, um, and I got to know Martin actually through emails and um, some mutual interest in. Um, in um, project he had several years back he was uh i think you were talking to parliament martin about trying yeah. to build some housing for um inmates yeah what happened is that i jo i joined a um an outreach in london central london which would go to the homeless on saturday mornings and um we that was led by, in fact, by an American ex-drug addict from New York. And I was part of his team. And we were, we were reaching out to about 20 men originally. And then I said to the guy, look, why don't you give them the word of God? You know, give them the, start speaking to them from the Bible. And he did. And we, we rose to about 400 to 500 men on the streets and on a Saturday morning. And we used to give them tea, sandwiches, and a chocolate bar called Kit Kat. And um, we, I was then approached by the government, the people in the government, and said, look, could you help provide a long, longer term solution for homeless in London? And also at the time I was prison, prison visiting, and they also asked me to get involved with the House of Commons in providing housing. The problem we had in England is, is a common problem, is that the governments change continuously. Their funding uh, changes continuously. And it was like, it was like organizing scrambled eggs, really. So it became too difficult. So in the end, I mean, the project, the, 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 the problem is still there. And maybe, you know, um, maybe in the days to come, I might be able to do something. Well, uh, I've got a friend here, Jim Newsom, uh, who's big into, uh, he, he's a, a person who was uh, born again before he went to prison for murder. And um, God, uh, he got uh, released after 15 years and uh, has been a minister ever since. I mean, powerful man of God. And he works regularly among prisoners uh, in the States. But uh, uh, we can get back on that topic in some days. Yeah. Every, whenever that surfaces again for you, you let me know and we'll try and bring it together. Okay, that's good. Oh. And of I, course, I noticed this, this morning the prison population of America, checked before coming online, the prison population of America is 2.2 .2 million. Right. And... In, in the UK, it's 83,000, which is much smaller. But America is much larger in percentage terms. It's much larger per population, you know? Yeah. So well, you wonder what's going on in America. That's It's five times higher in America, pro rata percentage, mm -hmm. than it is in the UK. Right. Right. Which is, which is probably quite worrying for um, America. Well, the truth in America. Somebody has their background on. Put your phones on mute, please. If you're Brian, good to see you. If you got your phone, put it on mute. Mute, because we're getting a background noise. If you're not talking, get mute, please. Sorry to bother y'all, but Martin is right. The uh, America, the U.S. has more uh, prisoners than anybody else, and um, so we'll 
we'll we'll we'll take that topic up at some point. Uh, Martin yeah. has I got to meet Martin through Larry Sims. Larry wave at us up here. That's Larry, my brother-in-law, and also serves on our board. So I met Martin through him, and uh, it's been a, a really a nice connection. Uh, and uh, I want Martin to give a little bit of his story, uh, just get us acquainted with how he came to the Lord, yeah. and um, also how he met Shanine, and tell us about Shanine and uh, what okay. you're doing now. Okay. Okay. So. So guys, I was born in, uh, you're all, you all know London. I was born in a place called Chelsea in London, which has got a famous soccer team. And I was born there in the 50s. So I was a teenager in the swinging, what they call the swinging 60s in London. Um, <laughs> and um, the Beatles were full swing, the Rolling Stones and these people. But um, my parents had come from Ireland. Uh, I, I was, was brought up as a Roman Catholic, very strict upbringing as a Roman Catholic and I ended up serving Latin Mass every day of my life for 10 years well for me it was a business because for the, the area I lived although I lived in a poor district was a rich, was surrounded by a rich area and I used to get paid for doing weddings funerals baptisms christenings <laughs> um, so I, it was to me a business but by the time I was 18, I had enough of religion and I, I, I sort of ran away from anything to do with God or the church. And I went out to China, to Hong Kong in, in 1978. I had my fortune read by the chap who um, told, he, he foretold the death of President Kennedy in 63. And he also uh, named them the, the astronauts in 1960 that landed on the moon the American astronauts. So he gave me a reading, which was more like a curse, actually, looking back. Mm. But he said I would marry a woman who was born on the 15th of October, and she'd have a child. And in a club in London one night, I met a woman who was born on the 15th of October, and who had a child, and um, we got married. But after 10 years of marriage, she ran off with someone else. During that time, I, I'd set up my own business and become very successful, made an awful lot of money. And um, anyway, I was on business in New York, got a phone call. My wife was having an affair with another man. So when I came back, my pride, my ego was all affected and I decided to get a divorce. Um, so we got divorced. And then for about nine years, I was on my own basically and I was leading a wrong life sleeping around and I was traveling the world I started a business in China I had, a, I had a, a, a lived in Beijing for three years I had a girlfriend there and on one of my trips back to London in a coffee shop one night a chap approached me and asked me what business I was in and he was a great big guy and he I said I'm in real estate he said you're just the guy I need to help me he said, I owe my landlord 300,000 pounds. Can mm. you help me? So I said, well, okay, what are you? He said, I'm a fashion photographer. He was a Vogue fashion photographer. He photographed uh, Princess Diana, the Queen, a lot many famous people. So he came to my office on the Monday, and I, by chance, knew the, um, the people that he owed the money to. I telephoned them, and I said, look, if you don't let this guy off his debt, he'd probably commit suicide. Mm. So we agreed that he paid 10, 10, 10 cents on the dollar the, of the debt he owed. He paid it. I didn't pay it for him. He paid it. And uh, we became friends. And then he said, what do I owe you for helping me? And I said, well, buy me a curry. So we drove out one night to West London. And in West, the west side of London is where the Asian community lived. That's the, um, the Indian community near Heathrow Airport. And we parked his car outside a building. And... When we looked up, it was the Salvation Army uh, Hall in West London. And we heard singing going on. Anyway, we walked in. There was a very good looking girl at the door. We walked in and we stayed in this meeting. It was a worship meeting. Everyone looked really happy. Smiles on their faces, singing. We were, we were just two guys from town, looked pretty miserable. And um, a month after that, my friend, 
that was 1996 that now um took his own life he hung himself on a friday night mm. a month after that the people from the salvation army including the good-looking girl came up to my office and said you need jesus in your life i said no i'm not interested in jesus i've, I've had enough of him you know please please leave the office and the girl kept saying to me no you Jesus has a plan for you. He's, he's a plan for your life, plan to prosper you. I said, well, I'm interested in prosperity. What's the plan? <laughs> anyway, long story short, we then, I started reading the Gospel of John, actually, was the thing. I, and then I met, uh, through that girl, I met Charlie Duke at a dinner. He was uh, the first American astronaut, I believe, to drive a car on the moon. Mm. He'd come to Christ. And through that, and um, I then eventually, after four years, married the girl who's Shanine. She became my wife, and that was in 2000. And Larry knows that she's, uh, she's got an international ministry. And she goes out across the world preaching the gospel. In fact, um, she's, very, she's, she's got a very big following now in, in Europe, but also uh, recently, Larry would be interested in this, um, in South America. And um, she spends a lot of time in, in, in South America and uh, well, until the COVID crisis and then in Europe. And we both speak uh, Mandarin Chinese. So it also takes us to minister <coughs> out to China. Um, so we, we've been blessed really by that. So actually through that um, diversion in my life, which took me out to China, I was able to learn Chinese and now I can praying Chinese with people. So Amen. God had a blessing in there. Um, yeah. So we, then I met Larry, I met Larry around just after we got married when he was at inspiration ministry. And then I went on the board of inspiration for about three years and uh, Larry and I have been friends since Larry, have we not? Amen. And, um, you know, God's done, a, God's done amazing things in, in our life. I mean, the amazing thing for me is coming to Christ is one thing, but staying with Christ is another thing. Because when you come to Christ, I mean, most people give their hearts to the Lord in an altar call or what have you. They don't realize it's the beginning of probably that those men or women being broken and being asked to stay on a course, which is, it's tough being a follower of Christ. So in my case, I had a number of business setbacks when I came to Christ. I had a majority of my friends completely disown me because they thought I was crazy. Because one of the things I used to do, I put, used to put dinners on in London, evangelistic dinners, and invite people. And a lot of people thought I'd gone mad. Um, with Shanine and her ministry, we, we, um, we, we also, we, we come under a lot of spiritual attacks. So our children have been attacked with illness and, um, we've seen obviously, um, God's hand move many times, usually move in the last minute. But, um, you know, if you have a, if you have a relationship with, with Jesus Christ, you're not, you're not going to go back. Amen. Well, you mentioned something to me uh, in the one of the last emails about I, the Lord speaking to you about restoration by the Holy Spirit yeah. uh, in one's life. Do you want to share a little bit on that now? And brothers, uh, at a certain point, if you have a question later on after Martin gets through uh, saying what he wants to say about that topic, if you have a question then uh, raise your hand and I'll recognize you and we'll connect you and Martin can respond. But Martin, what about your thoughts about restoration through the Holy Spirit? Well, yeah, when you, when you invited me to come today, Gary, I immediately got the word restoration and restoration as a word means restoring the old, but actually it's, 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 this is a different form of restoration. Rest, in John 10, what the devil seeks and comes to destroy God through his Holy Spirit 
will will restore that which is what, what effectively what what's been stolen or taken out of your life. So when you're when you've gone through a difficult time, or you have suffered, you will eventually, through your relationship with Jesus Christ, meet your restoration. And I think John three three, where it says you've got to be, you know, unless you're born again. I think the born again process is a rest restorative process. Okay. Because if, if we're taken back to where man degraded itself in the garden, that's one thing. But coming to Christ is actually a process of restoration, transformation. And through the Holy Spirit, I found that unless, you know, if, if you live in God's word and if you, you, you follow his, his word, you use his word, there's a restoration through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's uh, evidenced a lot in John, the book of John, isn't it? Um, so in everything I do now and have done for many years is that I, I take whatever I'm doing to the Holy Spirit and he guides. Mm. Mm. I, don't, I don't do anything without asking. Mm. So over the years, and it's taken 20 years, it's taken a long time, I've built a relationship mm -hmm. through his Holy Spirit. And I think that's what we are, at the end of the day, we have friends, we have associates, we have colleagues, we have spouses. At the end of the day, it's that one-to-one -one relationship that mm -hmm. you build yourself with Jesus through his Holy Spirit, that, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. We come into the world on our own, we will leave on our own. We'll make that, that last journey that we make is on our own. I remember uh, Benny Hinn, I believe, wrote a book called Good Morning, Holy Spirit, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. And uh, expound a little bit for a moment about uh, having a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Uh, we know who Jesus is, but this interpersonal relationship with the Holy Spirit, I think is uh, very key to our getting on with the process, as you put it. Yeah. Well, in John again, it says that those led by the Spirit of God are truly sons of God. Um, and so what, I'm, what, what one does is you go to Jesus and say, Lord, by your, through, through your Holy Spirit, guide me or lord through your holy spirit i've got this situation uh, at home or in my business which way do i go tell me what to do and i've several times in that still small voice i've, I've had that guidance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it's it's quite amazing really and i've just written a forward to a book which is written by Dr. Selica uh, Malos. She's in uh, Portland, Oregon, um, where she's a brain surgeon, essentially, a doctor. And she's written a, a book about how the Word of God affects us and our health and everything we do. Her first book was called Beyond Science. Her second book now is um, Made in His Image. And I've just written the foreword. And it's about the book is about how the spirit of God in, in, in within us, that he dwells within us, guides us. Mm -hmm. That's good. So your question is, have I answered your question or is that? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Well, perfectly. no, you have. Of course, that's the topic that we could talk about all day and for the rest of our lives. Is this doctor you're referring to similar to whom we've come to know in the States as Caroline Leaf? Is she kind of in her... League. Yeah, in the same league. Yeah, if you look her up, TBN are doing the book for her now, the new book. Charisma published her, her book, Beyond Science. It is the best Christian book I've ever read. Say your name again. It's um, Dr. Rodica, R O D I C A, Malos, M A L O S. Okay, very good. I, I think that book i mean good morning holy spirit helped me in my transformation um but i think that book that i just mentioned actually did change my life amen 
Amen. Well, uh, brothers, you've heard Martin talk, and he has such a breadth of, uh, of awareness. Uh, do any of you have any questions you'd like to direct toward Martin? Uh, Larry, I'll start with you. Is there anything you'd like to comment uh, off of what Martin said? <laughs> Uh, not really. I mean, I've like Martin said, we've known each other a good while, and we've been together at uh, quite a bit, really, both yeah. in the UK and here in the states. And uh, what I found him to be is is really what you see right right here. Uh, he's a man of character and integrity. Uh, God has allowed him. And he hadn't, he didn't talk about that, but he's sp he's spoken to the business school at Oral Roberts University and had a lot of experience here in the states, even though he lives in the UK. And uh, and Shanine has is probably uh, probably one of the most anointed ministers I have ever seen in my life. And of course, uh, you know Gary that I I've been around to quite a few of them over the years. <laughs> But uh, I will tell a quick story if I can. This is a little bit of a diversion, but we were with Martin and Shanine in Virginia Beach, and Shanine was going to be on the uh, webcast for 700 Club, and Gordon Robertson was sitting over in the corner, and Shanine was there getting acquainted with those that were going to be on the computers, on the, on the phones as people would respond. And they were getting ready to go on air and she began to minister. And so when it came time to go on the air, everybody there that was going to be working on the phone had been slain in the spirit. So they were all on the floor. <laughs> uh, but she's got an anointing. And uh, we were uh, Martin and Shanine's home one time and Martin probably doesn't even remember this, but he was showing me through the house. And um, we were on the floor with, with bedrooms. And he opened the door and he said, this is where Shanine spends most of her time. And in that room was a rug, a lamp, a CD player, and a Bible, and that was it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, that, that told me a lot. Yeah. So uh, God's using them uh, in, you know, in their sphere of influence. And uh, I think, you know, this is a good connection for all of us. And yeah. I appreciate everything our relationship has done over the years. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. No problem. Well, also, I want to turn to Ronald Gray. Ronald Gray, wave at us. This is Ronald Gray right there. Ronald, uh, except for the pandemic, everything is except for the pandemic, you know. We hmm. kind of got uh, shut down at home and all that. But Ronald has hmm. uh, missionary interest. He travels the world. And Ronald, maybe you can address Martin. You men don't know each other. But um, connect, and you may have a question for Martin you'd like to uh, pose. Good morning, Martin, and good morning, guys. Good morning, Ronald. Um, it's good to know that the Holy Spirit, I was just yesterday, uh, Martin, just a, a, a word of what you were saying, I was thinking about saying, welcome, Holy Spirit. I have really felt like uh, in my prayer time, the beginning from the beginning of the year, that this was... There, I think there's been several of them, but I really felt like the Lord said that this was a year of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, in the middle of all of the pandemic and all of the other things, I think God is certainly moving by his spirit. And I think yeah. we're going to see the glory of the Lord fill uh, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. Bring it to pass. Wow. My trust is always in that. And I think that they're under, People are looking at all the issues and all the problems, but underneath it, the Holy Spirit is moving, and yeah. He is powerful. And um, I guess, Martin, I was just thinking, I've, I've, I've been in the UK several times. Uh, what do you feel like is the spiritual climate right now? I know that y'all are also going, you know, through issues and there's yeah. turmoil and that kind of thing, but, but underneath that, uh, what what do you sense and see happening, you know, throughout the UK as far as, as the Holy Spirit moving in people's lives? Well, to be honest, um, Ronald, thanks. Yeah, good to see you. Um, I think in, in Britain, we're, you know, I, I, can't, I don't want to speak negative all the time, but 
we, we're in a very dark hour, aren't we? But we're in the hour that's mentioned in Revelation and Ezekiel. We're, we're in this, we probably are in last day's time. The Holy Spirit is operating 24 seven, as we know. The church, as we know it, is probably broken down. So I think the Holy Spirit now is, is really emphasizing the need to build this personal relationship, which, which I think he's concentrating on that more than the numbers game. You know, for many years, we're all saying, oh, Shanine spoke 10,000 people. Uh, Benny Hinn came, there were 50,000 people. Those days are probably come at, at an end. And we're actually being tested probably as individuals more so than ever because we are being called to have that one-to-one -one relationship. And in, if you're in lockdown at home or you're, you know, you are at home, it's very difficult to open that prayer closet and get in there. But when you do get in there, the power that comes out is for phenomenal. Yeah. So, it's something I recommend. It's something that I would, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll do anyway, but to get in there and press in as it, as it were and ask the Lord, you know, what you know, he, he says, ask for what you want. And if it's in my will, I'll give it. He's like our, our father. We well, should be like, our father should be like this. Not all fathers are like this, but, you know, he's there. He is our heavenly father. And we should, we should go there and, 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 and see him. And he, and he, he's, he guides by the Holy spirit. But I, I think society in Britain, we're in a, we're in, we've got big problems. We've got big problems, but we've always had problems. Yeah. <laughs> we've, you know, we've always had problems, but we're overcomers. That's what the gospel says. We are overcomers through Christ Jesus. And, you know, let's be positive. Let's be uh, upbeat. We will overcome. Amen. Amen. All the darkness that surrounds us, it's not going to change. But I use it. I, I just regard it all as background noise. Yes. And I just keep focused on what I'm doing. Because that's the other thing, is to keep focused. Focus on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and actually... See, see massive change. I mean, after this meeting today, we're talking now. Focus on the Holy Spirit, and I'm. I can see within a few weeks, your lives will change. Whatever's troubling you today will be gone. Hmm. And we pray at the end, hopefully, Gary, and I'll pray that prayer. But this is the time. There's another book that you should read. Um, is I was a member, I forgot to tell you this, I was a, a director of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, which was started by Demos Shikarian. Mm -hmm. And if you read his book, The Happiest People on Earth, it's a very powerful book about the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you guys know that book? Yes, I do. Have you ever been in any, any relationship with the Full Gospel Businessmen? Yes, I have. Yeah. But they broke up and they, because man got involved and they broke up and it all went wrong. You know, if man gets involved, usually it goes wrong. But there was a season where that was, the, the, the full gospel businessmen were real men, of, you know, of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Incredible men that were in, in that organization. Mm -hmm. Demos Shakarian was one of those men. He was the founder. But he wrote the book, Happiest People on Earth. And it's a wonderful book. It's a spirit-filled book. So I urge you to get read that as well. Very good. I want to get to some other guys, and thank you, Martin and, and Ronald, for that question. Ronald, by the way, serves on our board uh, for Gary Browning Ministries, formerly Discovery Family Ministries. When I look at Ronald, I think, what a man of God he is, because I just see on Ronald, Ronald's a strong man. He is that. He's a very strong man. God wants to use Ron. Well, God is using Ronald, but Ronald, you you know, you've got a lot of power. You need to use it. Yeah. I encourage Ronald more. Use more, more influence. 
Amen. I want to turn to Brian Benishak. Brian, it's good to see your face, brother. Can you hear me? Turn your phone off mute. Can you hear hey, me, Gary. Brian? Hey, man. I'm doing well. Hi, Brian. Good. I didn't know. Martin, if... good to hear you. Yeah. Good to hear you. And I see Jamie Strickland is on the call. I know Jamie from way back. Excellent. Hey, Jamie. Well, you might want to have you from met. Have you met Martin before, Brian? No, I have not. Um, I was invited um, um, by Larry Sims. Um, I'm a book publisher, and we were uh, starting a conversation about publishing a book. Yeah, my wife's doing a book, and she's nearly finished the book now, which is called uh, The Lord of the Silence. Wow. Which is about um, her experience in silence with the Holy Spirit and that power of the, the power of silence. That's good. Awesome. Well, I'm certainly not in the, in the category of, of uh, Charisma House or any of those guys. Um, a small publisher startup here in Daphne, Alabama. Yeah. Well, we should send you a draft of the book. Absolutely. Well, I believe in divine connections, as you men do. I think all of us here have some intertwining of relationships. And, and Martin said it so well, how it seems like a an off-the-cuff decision can actually turn into a broad open door. I remember King David said, uh, thou hast set my feet in a large room. And we didn't know when we stepped yeah. through that threshold that actually it was going to be enlarged. And so I, I do think the best is yet to come. I think diamonds shine the brightest. That's the reason uh, jewelers have that black velvet or whatever it is, they put that diamond on top of that black velvet. Why? So it will show the brilliance of the diamond. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what God is doing with the church. As it gets darker in the world, the brilliance of what God has done in us will shine like a diamond. Amen. I like my own preaching right now. That's pretty good. <laughs> Very good. Amen. After 9-11, well, by the way, I knew a diamond dealer in London who's probably one of the biggest in the world. And after 9-11, he, he said to me, uh, I said to him, well, 9-11 is terrible, isn't it? And he said to me, no, it's great. Uh, business, business has gone up 800%. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. This is that the glory. His, this sort this of is... response to 9-11, his business had gone up. There were, the people, there was a rush, apparently to buy trinkets and diamonds and that, but you know, what a waste of money, what a waste of time that is. Yep. <laughs> well, and to piggyback on what uh, Brother Ronald said, this is the glorious day for the church. Now, I don't know about doing church as we have known it in the past. If we keep trying to follow that model, I think the road's turned. Yeah. That's just Gary talking. But I think God's got a new paradigm. He's got a new picture that he's trying to, and it's essential stuff. It's who God intended the church to be from the beginning, first century men. Yeah. So let's see anybody else. Does anybody got a question you want to pose to uh, Martin while we've got him? Phil Eakes on the left. Go ahead. You're on, you're on mute. I press there you the go. Mark. Okay. Martin, uh, good to have you with us today. Thank you. Um, I'm a long time uh, traveler to uh, the Far East and China and uh, have a great heart for it. I've, I've been able to share there a few times. And in China? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whereabouts in China? All over. <laughs> really? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. We had, uh, I've been with various companies and my own company sourcing. And uh, we were there. I was there when it opened, right after Mal died, started going. But uh, wow. I haven't been there in a while. And, uh, yeah. we, you know, I even uh, I had a golf bag company 
they've made Titleist bags for us. And All right. They uh, they had a, a dormitory with about uh, 700 people in it, as many factories do. And, but they had an underground church. They had a huge basement. And on Saturday nights, all the people would go down there and yeah. uh, secretly worship the Lord. And it was unbelievably fantastic. Yeah. Electric. And, uh, they got shut down twice and huh. <laughs> said, one more time, we'll destroy the building. So I'm not sure what exactly today the where they're at with that. But I was one, just had a, just have a heart for them because uh, they had so many good friends and there were really a lot of Christians there. Yeah. And, uh, I just wonder what the uh, atmosphere is today where they stand and, you know, uh, in your ministry there, what, how can we pray for you and uh, support you? Well, in China, I think they've got more Christians there than anywhere in the world now. Um, and the, the, the thing is, is the government are terrified of Christianity. They don't want it. They're, they're any, they see it as a cult, you know, like Falun Gong and, uh, they're they're imprisoning the Muslims, for example, in the Uyghurs, in uh, to re-educate them. So they're terrified of Christianity. Um, some some obviously they let they let in, but it's more of a sort of token. So really, the the spirit in China is is antichrist. It's not. Uh, it's it's going to be very difficult. Um, the Holy Spirit that moves in China, of course, and. Um, this underground church movement has grown enormously. I mean, it's phenomenal. That's awesome. And one fine sunny day, it's all gonna, you know, the Holy Spirit will say, wake up China, this is it, and you'll see a turn. Mm -hmm. And if obviously China does uh, wholly come to Christ, then that's it, game over. It's, it's, it's the job's done, isn't it? Amen to that. In the meantime, there's a great persecution. I mean, there, there is persecution in China of Christians. In North Korea, where I've also been, I've been to, um, I've been to South Korea. I haven't been to North Korea. There is also persecution. Oh, yeah. And the, we, we, we forget so often. And it's like, see, like seeing someone go by in a wheelchair. You know, we see it. Yeah. We don't feel it. And it's like persecuted Christians. We, we hear of it, we see it, but we forget it. We don't really do much. Um, we don't experience it. We don't experience you know, we don't, it. We don't experience that, no. But, but a lot of people who are Christians are really suffering. Yeah. Now, when you go to Ch China, uh, exactly how do you minister to people? Um, so m most of the, uh, the work that we've done has been in Hong Kong, which is now China, but, and in Shanghai. In okay. Beijing, I, I tried to hold business meetings, for, uh, but I was disbarred by the hotel. Mm. Okay. They shut you down. Yeah. You know, and, why, and, and, and uh, wise as serpents, gentle as doves, to just go there and stand on the street and preach, you'd be, you're going to be arrested um, and incarcerated. So there's got to be a better way of doing it. Obviously, Bibles have gone into China. There's a great man in America out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, called Terry Laws. He's he's been taking Bibles into China. There's a lot of people taking Bibles in there. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the greatest was Hudson Taylor, right? Right. And um, you know, the, the film um, *Chariots of Fire*. Do you, do you guys know *Chariots of Fire*? The movie. Oh yeah. Uh, it's about Eric Liddell, who's a Scotch missionary. He was in China. He was in Tianjin. Yes. And um, you know, there's, there's men. God's, God's got all these people that he uses, you know, very subtly. There's people there in China today doing amazing work. But right. I know the Chinese government here in, in London. And um, I, I've, my business there in China was to produce wine which was a joint venture with the Chinese just north of the Great Wall in, in uh, yeah. Herbei province. And, um, you know, I, I <coughs> spoke to dinners about the wedding feast of Cana, which is an allegory, if you like, about the Holy Spirit. Because in the wedding feast of Cana, you remember, they ran out of wine, but they saved, there was the miracle of the transformation of water. But it says, 
that they save the best to last. Right. Amen. Which is actually the Holy Spirit. The I believe that. In our lives. I believe that on our lives. Yeah, and um, you know, www.martinwine.cn is a site you can visit. But that, that that's what I created in 1995 with the Chinese government and rather than antagonize the Chinese government it's like it's like any relationship if you antagonize it it's going to break up but if you work with it and become witness then you'll make the change mm. and I think that's the way the Holy Spirit he doesn't barge in he sort of maneuvers transforms changes very gentle but effective Yes. Well, great. Thank you. And thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, let's go around. To Charles died. You had your hand up. Charles, wave at us. Wave at us, Charles. All right. <laughs> You're on mute. You're muted. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi, Charles. Hi, hey, Martin. I uh, appreciate the words uh, and getting to meet you on this marvelous Zoom. And uh, uh, the question I have for you is, I'm interested to, f to know how uh, Great Britain uh, is faring in this, uh, of course you, you know that in the US, this uh, social justice movement and the Me Too movement and the Black Lives Matter movement that's kind of uh, got us in a in a state of uh, uh, state of confusion over here, and uh, a lot of people are in uh, flux there. Mm. How is that doing? And is that spreading over there in England? Uh, how yeah. are things? Yeah, it's 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 mimicking the United States in every which way. You know, um, uh, the 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 genuflection. Uh, is is happening we're, we're reopening sports events now so all the players genuflect there's a great wave uh, here. Um, uh, I was in I was in Bristol last I was in Bristol two weeks ago the day that they took down the statue of Edward Colston who was a slave trader they ripped down his, his statue and threw it into the water um, yeah America uh, in in Britain we've we, it's a it's America was always 10 years ahead of Britain, except in one area, and that's race, integration. We integrated more as a, as a, as a nation with the black community, more so than probably America. So I always think you were 10 years behind us in that process. Um, I think 13% of the people of America are black. Um, there are, I think, there, in, in Britain, we have um, the majority of the people are white, but we have Asians, blacks, and what have you. Um, and many of the blacks, of course, are, are the most fervent of Christians. If we didn't have the black community of Christians in Britain, we'd hardly, hardly have any Christians in Britain. Well, uh, I was just wondering, uh, you know, uh, assume that based on what you said that uh, I'm not sure the church here in the U.S. has, has been able to uh, are surprised by the onslaught uh, in, in this nation and really are at a loss on how to deal with it. Um, and I just, you know, that's... Well, is the, 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 problem is the, problem, the problem, if there is a problem, the problem is not going to be solved. The problem, if, if you actually, it's not a problem of color, it's a problem of policing. And in America, you've got this gun, you've got, you all carry guns. I mean, it's a phenomenal place. Everyone's gunned up. So <laughs> inevitably, you're going to get more, more incidents um, of this nature. I mean, the black guy that was sh shot by the policeman the other night, uh, it, was, it was sort of outrageous. And but they pull a gun in America. In England, we had a policeman killed outside our parliament. All he had was a taser. He got, he got, he got beaten to death. He didn't have a gun. 
because our priests don't carry guns. Now, you're not going to change the gun constitution in America. Um, if you say to the black people, well, what actually do you want? Because they are in, they are in our society very prominent. They, they read the news, they're in, they're in Congress, they're in business. You know, not every white man is in business or in Congress. So this race thing is, is a bit of a nonsense, really. And I think, so therefore, what, what, what the change can only be is education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Education is the answer, ultimately. But I don't think there's going to be that big a change well, I, I, I think for what it's worth is that, of course, we know Revelation teaches that when the kingdom of God is finally realized on earth as it is in heaven, that every kindred, every tribe, every tongue will be one together in the manifestation and the revelation of the kingdom of God. And yeah. that starts now. That yeah. starts with us now. Well, I think Moses' wife was a black woman. I think Thomas the Apostle was black. The first slave ship that arrived in America in 1619 arrived in Jamestown. It was three, it was, it was like eight months before the Mayfair arrived, but it was a slave ship and that came from Senegal. Right. It was a black, the blacks were selling the blacks into slavery. Yep. The middlemen became the Europeans and also the owners. So, I mean, I've seen in Africa the blacks beating the blacks. Disgusting. Yeah. In, in a place called Bopatswana. It, it was horrific thuggery. I've seen apartheid in South Africa where the white man and the, and, and the black were separated. I went to Nelson Mandela's prison where he's in prison for 27 years on Robin Island. I actually flew on a plane with Nelson Mandela to Port Elizabeth. I sat next to him for two hours. What they did to that man was terrible, but he admits himself he was a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, so cool. I don't see color. Cool. My wife is brown, Gary. I don't I don't see color, but I but I know that racism is 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 very prevalent in the United States and very prevalent in in most places in the world. Yeah. Well, I think it's a problem of personal identity in Christ. Uh, we had a we had a. Gary, remember, uh, Larry, you remember this. We had a, a meeting, Inspiration. I sat on the board, and another guy that sat on the board was a black man. He was, he was one of the leaders of IBM, directors. Yeah. And when we had a prayer line, my wife and I had the prayer line, which was like 100 feet long, and nobody came up to the black man with his wife for prayer. Why was that? That was in Charlotte. Well... I remember that, but I also remember when you got prayer lines going on, it's about the anointing. Right. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying anything about anybody, but when people that want prayer see the people in front of them being impacted by the power of God over here, and they yeah. don't see it over here, then they're going to know where the impact is. And that's yeah. what happened in that service because I was standing at the back of the room. And there were a lot of people, there were a lot of people praying. You know, David was praying for people. A lot of people were praying for folks. But the anointing, not that they weren't anointed at all, but the, the again, Shanine has a very, very distinct call. Yeah. And when yeah. you guys were praying, that's where the people wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm not saying, yeah, I look at the race issue and I, uh, you know, it's funny because Martin, you know, Lord John Taylor. Yeah. He just posted on Facebook a video. He's standing in front of the statue of William Gladstone, who was yep. fourth time prime minister of the UK, whose father was a slave owner. Now, yeah. John Taylor is the first African Caribbean a uh, member of the House of Lords in the UK. So it was his ancestors that Gladstone's father owned. Yeah. And, and he was talking, he's saying it is, uh, you know, it's not about race. Uh, oh, shoot, I lost it. But uh, basically he said the way forward is to bring down racism, not statues. 
And that's what he was, you know, talking yeah. about what's going on here in the States. They're going down, the statues are coming down everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we are almost, we've turned very, very juvenile in the way we deal with what's going on right now. Yeah. I, mean, I look at uh, one of our politicians taking down all of the pictures of former House speak- speakers of the House in Congress because they were uh, in the Confederacy. Now, this particular person's been in Congress for over 40 years. and But hmm. this week, she decided this is what we need to do. Uh, everybody's caving to the demands of a few. You know, if you well, the, 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 the Black Lives Matter movement is a political movement. I think I think Soros, George Soros is one of the funders. You know. Yep. Yeah. And I, I, to be honest, what will happen? It, it will it it will not grow. It will die out. Yeah. But black lives do matter. So do white lives and brown lives. I mean, they and do matter. Lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here, I forget, it's like 17 police officers have been killed since this uh, whole thing started, since George Floyd's death. Yeah. You haven't heard anything about that. Uh, so uh, it will pass, and we'll learn from it, and we'll move on. But if we aren't driven to our knees by it, then it's not been, been of any benefit to any of us. Yeah, I think you used the word childish, Larry. It's childish. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Brothers, I, yeah, I, I you know, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I spoke to those, you rightly reminded me, Larry, and it was the anniversary of that day in 1923, I think, called it Black Tuesday, where they just hung black people. Um, yeah. It was one of the worst atrocities in America. But, you know, we, we need to move on. We got yeah. bigger problems. We got real Good. problems. We got. We have to move on. Mm-hmm. Amen. Let me let me do this, brothers. And I don't want to cut anybody off. These topics can be talked about and for a long time. But do any of you other brothers who have not asked the question of our friend Martin Clark, would you like to pose a question? And is there something you're curious about? from either his story or um, what he emphasized about the Holy Spirit. Uh, Anybody else got a question? David Fink? Yeah, good morning, Martin. Uh, Good morning, David. I guess more of a comment than than a question. Uh, This business about pulling statues down, like I said, Gary, you can talk about it forever. If I remember, isn't there a scripture somewhere that says, make no graven in- images before me? Well, yeah. there's a whole bunch of graven images been put up over the years. Why in the world would they go up in the first place? Because people weren't listening to God in the first place. Right. And, and I really think this whole uh, movement by the Holy Spirit, it's timely. Yes. The, the church has fallen into, uh, I'll just say, disrepair. Uh, I read something out of Second Peter where it talks about the sow, well, after she's washed, she goes back and wallows in it, in the mud. Yeah. The church is, has been doing and will do again. This little respite we've had, people are saying, oh, yeah, let's re-energize the church. But I'll tell you, if we put lipstick on a pig, we still have a pig. <laughs> and it's not going to change anything. It's only the Holy Spirit that's going to change everything. I agree, yeah. when, when Jesus was first introduced by John the Baptist, first thing they did was get Jesus baptized. And then he was totally filled to overflowing with the yeah. Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit never left him. First thing the Holy Spirit does is drives him into the wilderness or encourages him to go like whichever way you want to put it. Depends on the scripture you read. Right. Um, and he met the devil after 40 days of fasting and defeated the devil. Mm. And I don't, I'm, I'll just come, I'm, I'll tell you the honest truth. I have come to the conclusion that without the Holy Spirit's presence, I don't think Jesus would have accomplished a darn thing out here. Amen. Yeah. Because absolutely. they were so one with each other, so yeah. one with the Father, it, it takes all three to get the job done. And yeah. if we parcel people into little sections here, little sections there, nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. We're just going to go around in circles and start, you know, Put lipstick on, and it's it's a waste of time. But anyhow, that's just my two cents worth. 
Thanks, David. That's really good. I really it echoes with me completely, 100%. And it's, it's what I've been trying to say this morning. Without the Holy Spirit, we've got nothing. We've got no power. It's through the Holy Spirit is, is, is the change. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very good. Anybody else, really quickly, for our hours up, we're not totally limited, but anybody else got a comment? Uh, Zach, Jamie? Uh, Ken, Pastor Ben, Wayne, David, any of you guys? Yes, sir, Wayne. I'd um, like to thank you so much, Martin, for giving us the insight that uh, you have experienced. Uh, I've spent a little time in England uh, with my cousin. Uh, she passed away several years ago, but uh, we were uh, spent some time in Bristol. And What is your saw... surname, Wayne? What is your surname? Wayne? Wayne. What is your surname? Wayne. Wayne. Wayne, what's your surname? Surname. Surname. What's Smith. your surname? Smith. I can't Smith. understand. Right. What's your Smith. surname? Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Sorry. Interrupting. Okay. Yeah. No, that's okay. But uh, we spent time in Bristol, and I, I I saw a lot of what you were speaking of there uh, while in Bristol. And, yes. Uh, my grandparents were both from England, so I'm half English myself. Yeah, well, you would be a Smith. Smith. That's why I asked the name. Smith. That's very right. <laughs> I may have to change my name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but thank you very much, Martin. It very insightful. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Man. Anybody else? Here, I'm since in? I have a loose connection with the Anglican Communion, I'm curious as to what is. This, is there any life left, Martin, in the Church of England, or is it totally irrelevant anymore? This is Ken speaking to you. Yeah, well, the church, the the Church of England is is the state church. I mean, right, it, right. You know, uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm divorced. The Church of England was founded out of divorce, right. In that sense, you could say it was founded on rocky ground. But the Church of England is a very powerful institution. Uh, our Queen's the head of the Church of England. The shape of the Church of England today, in some parts, is is okay. But without the blacks, there's more there's more Anglicans in Africa than there are in Britain. I'm sure. Um, the 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 church the other day came out against slavery, but then in the newspaper that yesterday pointed out that the Church of England were involved in slavery. Right. And 110 uh, curate salaries were paid from the proceeds of slavery. And the church have said we need to apologize for slavery and, 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 and that. And actually, the only black bishop in the Church of England retired this week. He was the um, uh, Archbishop of York, John Sentamu. You probably know him. Yeah. I think I, I, I'm getting away, the, more, the older I get, I'm getting away from denominations. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm one to one with Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, and that's what I'm focused on. I don't care if they're Catholic, Anglican, Presbyterian. I'm not interested. I'm interested in the Word of God, the Gospel, the, the, and the Holy Spirit. That's, 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 that's who I'm following. I'm not following Archbishop Welby, the Bishop of Canterbury, ex-oil oil executive. I'm not following him. I'm not following that woman down opposite the White House and that St. John's Presbyterian, Presbyterian Church that I've been. I'm not following her. I'm not following the Pope, Francis, who I'm due to meet in September. I'm not following him. I'm following Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit. And, you know, one day I'm going to meet all of them. I mean, what a day that's going to be, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else before we have some prayer time? Well, uh, this has been good. I, I've been enlightened by what Martin has, has told us. Very, very broad based, uh, so many connections. And uh, I'm so thankful for the time Martin you took and for all of you gentlemen too that uh, joined in this morning. Mm. Uh, <coughs> we have a rich heritage in the Lord. Mm. I'd like to have a a time of prayer. Martin, if you don't mind me prevailing upon you to uh, 
lead us in this prayer time and just close it out how you see fit and we just yeah. open our hearts to you yeah uh, thank you lord thank you come holy spirit Lord, I bow, along with all the other men, I bow before you this morning, Lord. First of all, in my heart, I say, God bless America. Lord, we, the nations, are all in your hands. We swear our allegiance to you, Lord, this morning. We follow you, Jesus. Lord, all of us will read the Gospel of John in the next seven days. And the references therein to the Holy Spirit. And we will be guided, Lord, in accordance with that word. And we will see transformation in our lives. And Lord, any problems that we have will be dealt with, will disappear and no longer be with us. Lord, we trust in you, we look to you, and we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Yes. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, I just ask now to touch each and every one of these men on this stream. We thank you for that technology, Lord. We thank you that we're able to speak thousands of miles away. And Lord, we look to the day that you will appear and you come back on Zoom. Lord, also today I'm reminded about silence is that when you were accused you remain silent and in the silence we will find the power and we thank you lord for that in jesus name i pray god bless you gary god bless your ministry god bless all of you men amen amen martin amen your brother say amen 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 amen, amen. amen. Uh, Tell us how we can uh, access you on the internet if these guys want to jot down uh, some connective point on the internet. Okay, so you can, you, I can give you my email. You can share my email with everyone, Gary. Oh, okay. And if you ever guys want anything to discuss or you want me to pray for anything, I'll pray. Um, and I can then, you write to me. I can, uh, you know, start a relationship. I, I do have a blog, uh, which I uh, called the cubitblogger.com. And you see some of my articles on slavery and on various topics that we discuss on America um, in those blogs. And, um, you know, without advertising, I mean, Shanine has a website. Larry, I think you've got the website address. Isn't it? Shanine, is it shaninclark.com? I think that's it. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. get that to Gary. But I, I, I also look forward to, to coming to Alabama and, uh, and uh, hopefully Shanine can minister there in, in some place, Barry, and we can arrange that we'll, when, we'll when the planes start to fly. Happen. Yeah, there are a number of places I'm sure would love to have her minister. Yeah. yeah. So there, I think, yeah, share my email. You've got my blog. Mm -hmm. um, anybody writes to me, I, I promise you I'll write back. And... Uh, any prayer request, I promise I'll pray. Yeah. Well, we're glad to know you, glad to be connected with you, and uh, there will be some uh, uh, out, outflow from this conversation this morning. Yeah. Well, well, brothers, it's so good to have all of you, and Martin, uh, for this time, we'll bid you adieu, and God yeah, bless you. you and Shanine, and brothers, we'll connect later on. Okay. Yeah.